Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the 2018 Sloan Sports Analytics Conference. Thank you so much for joining us here in the research papers room. We have a lot of exciting presentations um, from the research paper competition sponsored by Major League Baseball. We're going to get right to the next one. We have Philip Myman, who's done a lot of great work about data collection in esports. So please help me in welcoming to the stage Philip Myman. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Philip Myman. I'm an addict. Hi, Philip. I'm addicted to League of Legends. I'm not the only one, I know that's for sure. Uh, it's the most popular game possibly of all time. 100 million people play it every month. Many of you are probably playing it right now. Well, you can't play it. It's on a PC, so you can't play it right now. Um, League is a huge game, not just with the number of people. It's free to play, and yet they make an enormous amount of money. Where does the money come from? 98% of people who play League of Legends never pay a dime. I've never paid a dime of real money to play the game. But 2% of people pay a little bit. What do they pay for? They pay for little cosmetic changes. Are they getting better in the game? Can they dominate everybody else because they paid? No. They're little cosmetic changes that does not affect gameplay at all. And from those 2% of people paying a little bit of money, Riot Games, the publisher of League of Legends, makes $2 billion. For perspective, that's about how much the NBA made 15 years ago, the NHL 10 years ago, Formula One racing last year. So what is League of Legends? It looks like this, if you can see it. It's a five-on-five -five multiplayer online battle arena game. Five-on-five. -five. It's kind of like basketball in that you have a role, like a point guard or whatever. Point guards they can still go anywhere, right? They can still post up if they want to. Here you have assigned roles. Look at the mini-map on the bottom. Uh, there's top lane, mid lane, and bot lane. Usually there's one guy in the top, one guy in the mid, two in the bot, and a jungler who kind of roams. That's your team. There's two teams. Bottom left is the blue team. Top right is the red team. The objective of the game is the game doesn't end until somebody takes over the other team's nexus. That's at the top right or bottom left. It's kind of like capture the flag. You have to go through objectives. You have to get turrets. You probably have to kill the opponents in order to get there. Um, there's two ways to play. You could play for fun or you can play to what's called climb. You climb the ladder. Uh, how do you climb? Uh, it's like ELO. In chess, you have ELO, the same thing in League of Legends. You win a game, your ranking goes up a little bit. You lose a game, your ranking goes down a little bit. Um, and people want to climb. They want to climb, but they don't know how to get better, right? This is a game that's only been around nine-ish, ten years or so. It's not something that you sat on your mother's knee and she told you, son, when you get ganked, remember, put up a ward, right? It's, or you, you don't play, you don't learn with your dad like you would in soccer or baseball or basketball or something. Um, and the, part of the problem with b improving in this game is there's not that much data, which is shocking. This is an e-sport. It's digital. Everything's played on computers. It goes over the web. It's on wires. You'd think you'd have tons of data. No. Here's the data you typically see. It, Riot is really good at providing the data that it does provide openly for everybody. And this is the only data that everybody uses for any kind of analytics. You can see for any game the total number of kills, the total number of deaths, obviously, the number of turrets, the gold. You can see for each of the 10 champions, the 10 players, uh, what items they bought, how many kills they had, how many deaths they had, how many assists they had, so, stuff like that. That's it. It's like a box score. We could do much better. Let's do better. Look at this, for example. There's, this is if you're spectating a game. By the way, there's no privacy intrusion here. I'm not watching like, private games. If you're playing a game, it's usually publicly available, especially a ranked game, so anybody can watch it. We can spectate your game, either live or afterwards. Once we spectate your game, we can see a lot more information on here on, while watching the game than just the data that Riot provides. And obviously, as you're playing the game, you have more information just the items you have, right? You can see all 10 champions. You see how much health and mana or secondary resource bar they have. You see their summoner spell cooldowns. You can see for any particular champion in the bottom left, you can pick one of the 10 champions. That's Lux, for example. You can see her attack damage, ability power, magic resist, attack speed, movement speed, armor, whatever, all sorts of stats. By the way, those stats, we try to calculate them. In principle, you should be able to calculate those at any given moment of the game. You know who you are. You know how the champion grows throughout the course of the game. Uh, but there are so many different buffs and debuffs from enemies and teammates and items that uh, computing it becomes a nightmare, especially passive, so you really have to extract it. Now, how do we extract the information from here? We're doing it one of three different ways. We have three different approaches. All this will be open source and online. One is, uh, two of them are computer vision, and one is dynamic client hooks. Did you like that? Computer vision. So a computer watches the, the screen and picks out the important elements. One of those is the, the, those stats. But look at this in the bottom right. If you know nothing about League of Legends, if you want to know one thing, how to get better at League of Legends, the number one thing, if you go to coaches, coaches will offer their services, or you watch YouTube videos, you want to improve, the number one tip they'll give you is 
Watch your minimap, watch your minimap, watch your minimap. Watch your minimap. This minimap at the bottom right shows you everything about the game. Because uh, many times you want to focus on the middle, right? That's where the action is, that's where you're fighting and everything. But if you don't see the enemy on the minimap, they're probably coming to get you. If you do see them, you have an advantage. And the minimap, of course, this is where the optical data comes in. You can see the locations of the people, right? Where are they on the entire, the rift, the map? Uh, so getting the XY coordinates, we do that, of course, and that's a huge con um, improvement, but it's not enough. It's not enough just to see the XY coordinates. Look at this team fight happening over here. You see where the people are located. Yes, you have the location, but you don't really know what's going on. Is it a team fight that started earlier and continued over here? Is it, uh, well, well, look at the positioning. Look at these guys over here. So in principle, if you count them, if you can see them, there's four red guys, four blue guys. In principle, this is a balanced team fight. But look at Wukong the Monkey King. He's flashing into the middle, right? He's trying to kill everybody he can. He's going to die. He's going to blame his teammates. Why? Because they were out of position. This was not a very well orchestrated team fight. By the way, I'm, that's me in the top. You can't really see this little Teemo character up here. I like to play Teemo. If anyone knows League of Legends, Teemo's an annoying little champ that everybody hates, both on your team and the enemy team. Nobody likes him. Um, but he's cute. And, you know, the other thing that he provides that other ch a few other champions also have is where X, Y coordinates are not enough is he can go into stealth mode. You can literally walk over Timo and not know he's there. And then he suddenly pops up and spits a little poison dart at you. It's the worst feeling in the world. There's an entire channel devoted to just watching Timo die over and over and over again. What else do we see here? Fog of war. You know that term. In, in League of Legends, the fog of war means the part of the map that you can't see. In higher elos, and higher ranks, as you get to the pros and stuff, my understanding is I'm not a pro. I don't, I'm not that good. Uh, I play Teemo, right? Well, they, uh, the game becomes a game of vision, not of just chasing kills or avoiding deaths. You really have to know where the enemy is. You have to place wards to see where they are and avoid their vision, destroy their wards. Um, Knowing what, where the fog of war is, isn't that incredibly useful information? Yes, it is. Does Riot provide it? No, it does not. What else do we have? We have the turret health. So we know when a turret, a tower, a defensive mechanism, is destroyed, but we don't know at any earlier time how much health it has. We need to extract that information too. Okay, so the yellow stuff is what Riot provides. The red stuff is what's important and what we, need, we provide. The basic process is this. First, we spectate your games. The official Riot API gives you the basic data, things like the kills, deaths, assist, items, gold, nothing. Then we extract the data, this is what we get, all the other information, the stuff that we were talking about, the stats, the tenacity, the neutral monster buffs, all this stuff. Damage is really important. Riot will tell you the total amount of damage you did and how much of it was to champions. But to which champion? At what point in time specifically? No dice. But that's really important. You want to know in a particular team fight, did you hit them when it counted? Did you attack the correct people or did you focus people like tanks? If you're just attacking tanks and you're not doing any kills, you're just... Nothing, it's not worth it. Um, combos, now we know exactly which uh, spell, so every champion has an auto attack and also four different spells, QWER. Some of those deal damage. A, a combination like a Q auto attack E is different than maybe an EWQ, right? And knowing which one of those works better provides damage is an important consideration for whatever champion or matchup you're playing into. And of course, we have the creme de la creme, the X location and Y location of all 10 champions multiple times per second, their velocity, their acceleration, and like Teemo, their stealth status. Once we've extracted this information, the next thing we have to do is generate new stats. What are some of the new stats we generate? Just knowing your ability counts. How many times did you use Q? How many times did you use your ultimate, your R? What was your combo damage per minute so you can see which combo specifically worked best? What was your map coverage? Did you roam enough to cover the area and help your team out all over, or were you just focused? I tend to just I micro focus. I go in just top lane, that's called split pushing. It's the fancy term, but really it just means I don't look at anybody, I just stay in my one lane. It's not a good thing, you should roam. How often did you do useful things? Or, you know, like, did you fight? Did you go for team objectives? Or were you just kind of wasting your time lollygagging? Your team fights, this is, takes a lot of work. So even knowing if you're in a favorable team fight is really hard, right, as we were talking about. You need to know the XY. You also need to know where the skirmish began. When did somebody join? Is that still part of the original team fight or is it a new team fight? Um, just being in favorable team fights more frequently than unfavorable is a huge thing. So fight in 4v2s, 5v3s as opposed to 1v4s. Uh, and, and, okay, if you do get a coach, if you ever start looking at it, the second thing they'll tell you, number one is what? Look at the minimap, that's right. Number two, review your re replays, your games, and look at every time you died, right? And figure out why did you die so it doesn't happen in the future. Why did you die? Typically, it's because either you were in a bad team fight, you were in a 1v3, of course you died. 
or where you got ganked. Ganked means somebody came from another lane that you didn't see and just killed you, so it became a 2v1. How did you not see them? Did you not place a ward? Was the ward destroyed? Did they have a control ward against you? Was there a health difference? Was there a gold spent difference, an item advantage, a neutral monster damage, like if you're at the Baron, you're taking damage and they're not? All of those things we track and, and uh, report. Now, once you have all of these stats, the, the simplest thing to do, the most important thing to provide automated improvement analysis for players is visualization. And what's the first kind of visualization you do when you have optical data? Heat maps. So here's a heat map. Sometimes heat maps are not useful. This heat map tells an important story right away. So you can see that this is clearly a mid laner, right? He's spent most of his time in the mid. He started in the bottom left. He got very aggressive. He actually took down the first mid tower pretty quickly, and he spent a lot of time on the second tier mid tower. He helped at the Baron. He ganked bot a few times, then eventually pushed in and won. Perfect story, very quick from a heat map. You can do a similar thing with a ward map. This is about vision. Where did you place your wards, and were they expired or killed at, or are still alive at the end of the game? And you can see from here that the wards were very aggressively pushed. That means they pushed up a lot. You're not warding your own jungle because who cares if the enemy is there? You want to see where they are in their jungle now that you've pushed out. From the wards, we can also look at vision analysis. This is probably my favorite visualization. We've done this two ways. One is looking at the actual radiuses and the overlapping regions for how much vision you provide from your minions and your champions and your wards. And the other is just the ward count. They're very similar. So the blue is your total team vision, how much vision your team placed. Green is your contribution to your team. So it's a portion of the blue. The red is the enemy vision. And the yellow is the net vision that you had. Right? You want to win the vision game. How do you, what happened in this game? So you were flat for a while, you had a vision advantage, went back to zero. Vision advantage, went back to zero. Vision advantage, went back to zero. Vision advantage, and you won. Good. Congratulations. Good game. Uh, so this is the time management. Uh, how did you spend your time in various stages of the game? Were you laning? Were you fighting? Were you transitioning? Were you fighting a baron? Or were you wasting time? You want to basically minimize the amount of time you wasted. Tilt is a concept that's really pop popular and powerful in League. It's, it can be a toxic environment. It can be very frustrating when you start to lose. This is a term borrowed from poker, but it has a slightly different meaning in, in League. Tilt in League means you've just gone crazy, right? You're just insane. You, you, go, you, start getting you start dying over and over and over again. What typically happens is you go to lane, you're doing the best you can, you die. Okay, you walk up back to lane, you get killed again. All right. You walk up back to lane. Now you get ganked by the jungler because everyone knows you're behind, so that's a free kill. Now you're down 0-3. Your teammates are yelling at you. What are you going to do? You're going to try to save the day and be a hero. I'm going to go get that guy. You're a few levels behind. You have no gold. They're much stronger than you, and you're going to die again and again and again and again. And that mental thing that happens with you is called tilt. How do we measure tilt? We have one new metric for it that basically looks at the amount of time you spent dead relative to the total amount of time that your team spent dead over the past few minutes, meaning if you're the only one who's dying over and over and over again, you're probably tilted. If you're around 20%, you're probably OK. But you can also look at the deaths that happened at the time they happened. What was the team fight? So this first guy, he first fights in a 4v2, that's an advantage to him. Great. He dies, it's okay. Maybe they also took out a few of their other players. 3v3, he died. You know, happens. But after that, look at it. He's 4v5. Stupid. 3v4. Stupid. 2v4. Stupid. Yes, this is probably my game. Now that we have all that information, we want to make a win probability model, right? Because we have in, uh, data for every second of every game. Uh, we've tried it a bunch of different ways. The simplest way, because we want it to be available to players who are playing live, we take the minutes elapsed, the blue and red kills, the blue and red towers, and the blue and red monsters, and the outcome variable is that whether the team eventually, at the end of the game, won or lost. It, we'll just do a simple machine learning, logistic regression, stochastic greediness, and minimize the negative log probability. We can have a win probability app. Uh, live so that you're playing the game and you can quickly tap in while you're dead probably how many towers you have how many kills they have and it can tell you yeah you have a 92 percent chance of winning good for you, you should keep playing at 20 minutes is the first time you can forfeit without it being unanimous at 15 you can forfeit unanimously but if it comes back and it's like you have a three percent chance of winning you know why waste your time right go ahead and forfeit uh, with the win probability, we could do another visualization, which is a win probability graph. You've seen these, of course, for any game. You can have win probability graph. But with the wrinkle we add is we automatically annotate it. So it automatically finds the peaks and valleys and adds the contextual information to describe what's happening in the game at that point. So here, at 11 minutes, you were up. You had a 70% chance of winning. You were doing great. Why? Because you had two more net kills. When it came down to about 18 minutes, now you're suddenly down to a 35% chance of winning. What happened? You're down now five net kills total, and they got a Drake and Dragon, so you're, you're in trouble. All right. The main question we'd like to answer, which is probably one of the most important questions for any sport and in sports analytics, is how much does an individual contribute to his team's win? Right, because we all know in basketball, in any sport, the, the people can have a great game, lots of points, but the team loses, right? That's almost a cliche. 
The same thing can happen in league. You can have lots of kills. You did very, very well, but your team did not do very, very well. So how do you con measure what your particular individual contribution was if we know that points by themselves don't work very well. There are various methods like win probability added and so on, but we want to make it simple, right? The key point for league is to make things as simple as possible. Let's start with just looking at standard kills. If you look at the standard kills, how many, how many kills you got as a percentile, meaning relative to other players. If you had one of the best games of all time, in terms of kills, you're in the 100th percentile, okay? If you're in the 100th percentile, you had a, you had a crazy game, like you were off the charts, tons of points in the basketball context, uh, you, then you probably had something like a 75% probability of winning the game. That's pretty good, but it's not 100%. And in fact, that number, the graph, you can see it goes up. It goes up. It's good. It's better to score more points than less, but don't forget you have four other teammates and five other enemies, so a lot of other things can happen. Agreed? So it goes up. That's good, but it's not ideal. What's ideal is that gray line, the y equals x, the 45 degree angle, right? Because if it's lined up on there, that's the holy grail. How awesome would that be, right? Well, that's probably impossible. No, it's not impossible. If we look instead of regular standard kills, we look at smart kills. What's a smart kill? A smart kill is one that when you kill an enemy champion, you also locally increased your team's win probability, meaning you did something good. You can measure it in win probability. You can measure it in terms of gold added. If you, for example, killed somebody and that helped you take an advantage, smart kill. But if you're just chasing someone around, like a champion like Singed who just spits out poison behind him, if you're just chasing him around for a minute and a half and then eventually you kill him, that's a waste of 90 seconds. That's probably not a smart kill. Smart kills give you the holy grail. If you're at 100%, this, this is like a, imagine instead of points for basketball, if you had a different metric like smart points or something that correlated almost perfectly with team performance, how awesome would that be? We have another one. So let's look at standard deaths. Obviously, you don't want to die. If you have smaller deaths, you're t closer to the top. And again, it's nice. It's increasing. Increasing is good, but it's not the holy grail. Worthless deaths is basically the holy grail. What's a worthless death? A death is worth if you got something out of it. Like if you killed two of them and you died, worth. If you took out an inhibitor and you died, worth. But if you just died by yourself, that's worthless. That's the thing that matters. Deaths by themselves are not necessarily bad. It's a resource, your life, that you can use. Um, if you learn, we did one other tool, and if you learn nothing else from this entire conference, and from a statistical basis, I hope you go away understanding how wonderful fast and frugal trees are. They're different from the machine learning or deep learning or AI. They're different from regular regressions, but they're so beautiful, especially in the context of sports. Uh, they look like this, and you can just Google fast and frugal trees. They have a wonderful R package. It makes it everything nice. Uh, a fast and frugal tree gives you a decision tree that's small, comprehensible, understandable, simple, and does very, very well out of sample. Very, very well out of sample. So if we feed it everything we know, if we feed it all of the, uh, all of the standard metrics, all of the advanced metrics, everything, what does it come back with? It comes back with the following bottom line. Don't die for no reason. Worthless deaths is the number one. Right? If your worthless deaths are below average, you are very likely to lose, meaning you, did, you died too much. But if you did die, okay, so at least try for some smart kills. If you get smart kills, then you probably will win. If your smart kills are above average, you will probably win. But if you can't get smart kills, at least roam and help your team get good map coverage. That's it. Those three things, nothing else, none of the combos, the damages, the, any of the standard metrics, those three things that correctly predict your team's outcome 80% of the time, even if Timo's around. That's he's cute. Do you agree? He's cute. All right, what's our conclusion? So the gamers would say you just got to get good. Here's what we did. Using a combination of computer vision, dynamic client hooks, machine learning, visualization, logistic regression, large-scale cloud computing, and fast and frugal trees, we generated new and unique data on millions of League of Legends games, calibrated a win probability model, developed enhanced definitions for standard and advanced stats, presented automated improvement analysis, developed a framework for uh, determining an individual contribution to a team's victory, and applied that that framework to the advanced test to show that they do, in fact, better correlate with and explain team performance. Whew. All of our code will be, in fact, as of this morning, is available open source under the MIT license on github.com slash philipmyman slash vantage sports lol. It's, uh, you have one master branch in nine different repos, 4,000 files in total, about a million lines of code, mainly in the Go with the smattering of JavaScript, Python, R, and Mathematica. Questions? So for the Q&A, just raise your hand and we'll come around with the mics.
Did y'all factor in account um, how like deaths when you're ahead, like like say you're six and zero, you've got a large uh, bounty. Whenever you died, did y'all factor in that? Yes. Uh, so the, the question was, when you if you're ahead a lot and then somebody kills you, you have a bounty, and that gives a lot of gold to the enemy team. It's one of the worst things you can do. Uh, yes. So what when that happens, if you die, two things happen. One, the enemy team gets a lot of gold, and two, the win probability changes to their favor. So yeah, either metric would uh, would calibrate that, both for smart kills and worthless deaths. It's a great question. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Why use optical data? Can't you get the state's files and just go right to the numerical oh, representations only, of the information? If only. No. They, uh, they hard encode it. That would be ideal if they showed you the file. One of the things we tr that's, one of the, that's the fourth method that we're trying to do. It's just really hard. Uh, their wire protocol that they send over the network changes all the time, um, and it's not easy to understand. Like, you have to really like, hack it. That would be awesome. <laughs> So a lot of the stuff you talked about was related to ranked and climbing and stuff like that. How would it be extended to, let's say, the competitive aspect of it? Because obviously competitive players, I mean, they're all ma master challenger, they're very good, but then you also have to consider certain variables like voice communication or practice outside of the actual game, the limited amount of games they play. How does that factor in? How can it be extended to, let's say, a competitive environment? Yeah, so we've had a bunch of teams uh, in the LCS who are our clients, who are partners with us, and they've used our technology. One of the, they, they have some slightly different needs, obviously. Uh, one of the things they're most interested in is team comp. That's the composition of your team versus, so what do you, you need to be able to predict. Okay, so when you're playing a regular game like us, Joe Schmoes, when you log on, you can log on by yourself and they match you with random other people against random other people. So you don't know who they are at all and what they choose. And you can ban certain champions, but then you're just kind of banning generally. I don't want anyone to play Teemo, right? In competitive atmosphere, you know exactly who the other people are and you know exactly what they like to play. So one of the tools we developed for them was like this draft tool where you know how likely they are to in what order to take the, the, the roles and within the roles which champions they tend to prefer, what kind of team comp you can create. Given um, the team comps that you have, you can see if, do you tend to do more physical or magic damage? Do you have more of a split push advantage than them? So yes, the, the same kind of things could happen plus additional. Uh, so how does this look like in action? Uh, do you have like a live dashboard on the overlay? Uh, I don't have it here, but I could show you. Yes, we, it's a website that you log into if you're a player, uh, and it has all of these visualizations, and it has numerical tools and achievements unlocking. So as you're getting better at reducing your worthless deaths, let's say, or increasing your smart kills, it'll say, oh, you know, congratulations. So you're, you're constantly improving. So it overlays the game, game? No, 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 it's after the game, all post-game. Forgive my naivete because I'm a little old, but how are you using this data to help players master both, let's say, more functional mental skills like, or physical skills like reaction time, but also emotional skills? How can this be used to do that, please? Um, on the mechanical level, mo there's... The me okay, so every champion you play has different mechanics, right? You have to learn how to click and in what order to do combos in. Uh, that's... It's like learning how to dribble a basketball. That's not what we're about, right? We can't really help much with that. Um, there's a practice tool now that Riot Games provides where you can practice things, and you practice against bots and normals, and you can do all that. Um, but one of the things you do, do need to know is, given uh, that you're playing a particular champion, which combos are the right thing? Some champions are really simple. It doesn't matter what order you do them in. But some, like Lee Sin, are ridiculous. It should be a QW or WE or Q, whatever, right? That we can track and help you with. Your second question, the emotional one, um, we, have, we have some things that we're working on uh, that we have thought about, but the main thing was the tilt. That's the biggest thing that happens with players is they just go a little bit nuts. So if we have the tilt metric, which in fact we can do uh, a little bit live in some senses, um, that can help with people de-stressing, you know? Do you have a way to adjust, I'm right here. Thank you. Um, do you have a way to adjust the metrics for the quality of competition you're, you're facing? So if you're reducing your, your deaths against a better opponent, does that come into factor? Um, Riot automatically matches you with people who it thinks is roughly at your level. So we don't do much more beyond that. We have a little tweak. We have our own player rating, so you can compare yourself to other people within the rank how you're doing, percentage-wise, and that can give you an indication. But uh, Riot does a good job of that already. OK, I think that's all the time we actually have for questions. But um, please join me in thanking Philip Myman. Thank you.